construction process continued in a systematic manner. As each level was built, an additional water lock was built. A series of water locks allowed stones on barges to move up to the pond and pounded by the casing stones. Each time the upper water lock was filled, another stone on barge entered the pond on top of the construction site. With the Great Pyramid being built level by level, the pond impounded by the casing stones is always about waist deep. Stone after stone floated on barges, uh, which moved up from the Nile River up the series of water locks to the building site. Then they went up the series of water locks built into the casing stones and then into the pond impounded by the casing stones. The Great Pyramid was built level by level, yet the pond on top of the Great Pyramid always remained about waist deep. The water locks are built into the wall of casing stones. Each water lock is built on top of and supported by the wall of casing stones below it. These water locks are an integral part of the wall of casing stones. Water is extremely heavy and the water locks need a substantial base to support them. They are like a rectangular box container sitting on top of the wall of casing stones below each water lock. Again, the pond impounded by the casing stones is only about waist deep and workers can stand on the level of rough cut interior stones as they wade in the pond moving barges and doing other tasks. After a level is completed, water is added to the pond which raises the surface of the pond up to the next level. Certainly, water has filled the gaps between these rough cut interior stones. These gaps are filled in all the way down to the bedrock with water. Water from the pond will not leak out of the pond through the cracks in the rough cut stones. This is because these cracks are already filled with water all the way down to the bedrock. The following animation shows that the pond is only waist deep because the Great Pyramid was built level by level. It also shows that water has already filled the gaps between the stones all the way down to the base of the Great Pyramid. When the next level is ready to be built, water is added to the pond which raises the surface of the pond to the next level. Workers were able to stand on the interior stones as they waited in the pond. Water existed between the cracks all the way down to bedrock. Yet in the construction process, the pond always remained about waist deep. The pond is only waist deep, yet there is water between the rough cut interior stones all the way down to bedrock. The movement of stones is relentless and travel to the pond impounded by the casing stones in a production line efficiency. No ramp of any configuration is feasible. That is why the movement of full-size stones is never demonstrated by Egyptology. The systematic use of water locks provided a production line efficiency in the movement of materials to the pond. Every time the upper pond was filled, another stone on barge entered the pond. The water locks are built into the wall of casing stones. Each water lock rests on top of the casing stones of the level below it. The ideas and concepts touched upon in these videos are fleshed out in the two books I have written about the Great Pyramid. The first book is titled Lost Technologies of the Great Pyramid and it is about how the Great Pyramid was built. My second book is called 
the Great Pyramid Prosperity Machine. And it is about why the Great Pyramid was built. You can get these books from any bookstore. If they do not have them, you can, uh, they, the bookstore can order them for you. They are also available from Amazon.com. And both of my books are available as Kindle eBooks that you can read on your Kindle or on your smartphone or on your PC or Mac. So if you're interested, you can get these books uh, any number of ways and they're available uh, for much more information than these videos can provide. This time-lapse film shows a water lock in the Panama Canal. Water locks are powerful and operate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Water locks are the system of choice to quickly move and to lift our most heaviest objects. The systematic construction process of moving stones continued as the Great Pyramid was built. If the stones cannot be moved using back muscles, they cannot be set in place using back muscles either. How were the stones taken off of barges in a fast manner? How were casing stones set in place very quickly without being damaged? How was the bonding agent placed between the casing stones so that the joints are watertight? What was done with the empty barges? Continue watching this video series to find out how the Great Pyramid was built. Mm -hmm.